When children are all grown up but still living with their parents, sometimes it's amusing. Other times, not so much. This is a bad time. Failure to launch syndrome. We've seen it on the silver screen. All right, that's it. That's it. You two guys leave me no choice. No television for a week. What? And any number of sitcoms have had fun with it. What's the matter, Robert? Did you eat something bad? I'm a cop and I live with my parents. I'm on a steady diet of human suffering. <laughs> Cohabitating with mom and dad is no laughing matter. Some say it's a growing epidemic. According to the Pew Research Center, nearly 70% of grown children under 30 live with their parents. Is that possible? If you want to avoid a failure to launch scenario, listen to Joseph Allen and Claudia Worrell Allen. They are co-authors of Escaping Endless Adolescence, How We Can Help Our Teenagers Grow Up Before They Grow Old. And they are the parents of three teens, right? Yes. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. very much for being here. Seventy percent. That's a crazy number that sounds it almost sounds impossible. Does that ring true with what your experience? Absolutely, and you know, we're finding that uh, young people, you know, well after college are counting on their parents, not just for financial help, but uh, young people say they're getting help with domestic chores on a monthly basis. Um, they're so, just simply not moving. So mom's development. doing their laundry too, along with living in the basement or, or and whatever getting else. Money. And what's wrong with this picture? Well, we call it the nurture paradox. And that's the idea that parents have this strong, biologically hardwired instinct to nurture our offspring mm -hmm. as much as possible. And you know, in previous generations, limited time and resources kept that in check. Right. But now we're seeing parents who are focused in an almost unlimited way on nurturing their own offspring. And that may be okay with young kids, but with teenagers, it totally backfires. Because in, your, because in your book, you go back a couple generations, it didn't happen at all. You know, adolescence used to last a microsecond from the time when some young person developed a skill and someone said, hey, that strong kid over there, get over here. Get to work. Help then, me build the barn. Help me build the barn. And then they got sucked right into the adult world, and that's how they grew up. Right. And there was no such thing, if you go back in the literature, about adolescent problems and teenage angst and all this other stuff. That's a creation of our culture. That's something the last few generations, and it's gotten steadily worse with each generation. So then these kids who are 27 years old and living in the basement and are totally dependent on their parents, what's wrong with that picture in terms of their own futures? Well, you know, in hard times in the past, when young adults or teenagers lived at home, they lived at home but contributed to the family, whether right. by labor or income. And now we're seeing those 27-year-olds who are really living off of their parents. And that doesn't teach them anything about becoming self-sufficient, whether it's doing your own chores mm -hmm. or getting your own job. And that's where, that's where they need to go. I just need a couple tips then for parents. If they find themselves even in the neighborhood of this situation, as a father, what do you need to not be doing to make sure that this doesn't happen to your kid? Well, you know, Harry, we dads are often the fix-it people in our teens' lives. Everything from car repairs to computer problems. And what we need to do is start passing those skills on. So we tell dads they should have an alarm bell go off in their head anytime they're about to do anything for their teen. And they should stop and say, can I teach my teen to do this for him or herself? As opposed to doing it yourself. As opposed to doing it and yourself. And as a, as a mother, what is the most important thing you should or shouldn't be doing for, for your child? Well, mothers, it's no secret, really enjoy taking care of their children. But as kids get older, we need to tweak that a little and start to give adolescents the joy of being the ones doing the caring. So we need to look for ways to let teens contribute, whether that's with an elderly neighbor down the street, tutoring a small child, or just making dinner for your own family. Look for ways to have your teens contribute. There are amazing things in this book. I read a good portion of it last night. Really good stuff. Thank you so much for being here.